Hi Church, welcome to part three of our vision series. We are exploring what it means to be a healthy, growing and biblical church. And so, so far we have looked at why our only hope is in Jesus and how following Him as a disciple is the only way to truly know Him as our Lord and Saviour. And so our hope is Jesus, our way is discipleship. Now, if you've uh, found yourself here without watching the first two parts, then I do recommend go back and watch them first. Uh, But this week, we're going to look at the third part of our vision that states our strength is in community. You know, God doesn't expect us to do life alone. In fact, uh, you know, we were created to be in community. So Gavin Gray, our York pastor, is going to break this down for us. And uh, so here's part three. And so today, part three, this is our theme for today. Our theme is our strength is in community. We're going to jump straight in with two Bible verses. The first one is Acts 2, verse 46. It says this, Every day they continued to meet together in the temple courts. They broke bread in their homes and ate together with glad and sincere hearts. The second verse is Hebrews 10, 25. It says, do not, do not give up on meeting together as some are in the habit of doing, but encourage one another. You know, I want to start today, church, by saying this. I love the church. I love our church and I love the church. You know, I became a follower of Jesus at the age of 17. And straight away, I, I felt a call to to serve Jesus. I felt a call to to serve Jesus through serving in the local church. And at the time, I didn't really know what that meant, but I've now been part of God's church for 25 years, a quarter of a century. It's flown by, but, but I love the church. You know, one thing I've noticed over those 25 years is this, that seasons come and seasons go. Over those years, there's been different seasons within the church where the church, His church, God's church, has tried to respond to what God has been saying to the church in that season. So seasons come and seasons go. But what we need to remember is this, that His church will always continue and His church always advances. There is a purpose for God's church. It says this in Ephesians, sorry, yeah, in Ephesians 3, verse 10. Now his, now his intent was now that through the church the manifold wisdom of God should be made known to the rulers and authorities in the heavenly realms. See, God's church has always had a purpose, and it will always have a purpose. And so here we are, stepping out and continue to step out in this new season of what God has for us as a church. And in this season, as we have been listening to God, we've been been led by the Holy Spirit, we believe that God is reminding us something very powerful, that being part of His church is not just about attending a service on a Sunday or attending a gathering on a Sunday. It's far more than that. In fact, it never was about that, but it can so easily become that if we are not careful. See, in this season, we believe that God is calling us all into a deeper encounter with Him and, in, and in, into closer community with each other. So I'm going to jump straight in today with this powerful truth. The truth is this, our strength is in community because we were not called to live this journey of faith in isolation. Let me declare over you right now, you were not called to live in isolation. I'm sure the months and months of COVID lockdown and and, uh, and isolation that we went through has revealed the power of this truth to us. You see, the impact that social isolation has had on many of us is still being revealed in our lives today. See, whilst it may have kept us safer from COVID, it was actually also making us now vulnerable to other 
health and emotional issues. Why? Why? This is why. Because we were not called to live in isolation. We were called and designed to live in community with others. God's design for you is for community. Let me emphasise this powerful truth by saying it like this. The whole Bible is literally about community. If we were to turn right now to Genesis 1 verse 1, it says this. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. So in the beginning, God. We go on to Genesis 1 verse 2. It says this. Now the earth was formless and empty. Darkness was over the surface of the deep and the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. So the first chapter of the Bible, we hear about God and in the second verse, we hear about God the Holy Spirit. If we were then to jump forward into the New Testament, into John chapter 1, verse 1, in talking about Jesus, John says this. He says, in the beginning... What is the beginning? It means that time before creation. So that time before creation, in the beginning was the Word, Jesus, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. You see, the Bible begins with the perfect community within the Trinity. So Genesis chapter 1. If we then quickly go down to Genesis 1 verse 26, then we see that God says something amazing. He says this, He says, let us make man in our image, after our likeness. So God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, and God now says, let us make man in our image. So God creates man. Adam is formed. If we then quickly went into Genesis chapter 2, verse 18, God says something again very powerful, and he says this, it is not good that man should be alone. I will make him a helper fit for him. And so as a result of that, we're told that God, out of, uh, out of Adam's body, God forms and creates woman. He creates Eve. So right at the beginning of the Bible, right at the beginning of time, we see the Trinity in perfect community. And now we see Adam and Eve have been created for each other. Now there's a powerful truth here. Because Adam and Eve had been created to be in community with God and in community with each other. See, before Eve was created, Adam had God to dwell with in the garden. He was in the Garden of Eden and he was there, but God was also there dwelling with him. So Adam, in the beginning, before Eve was created, Adam had God to dwell with him. But God knew that Adam also needed Eve. You know, church, I think sometimes we can have this mentality that all we need is God. Whatever we go through, all we need is God because He is with us. And you know what, church? On one hand, that is true. Whatever we go through in life, we don't need anything outside of God and we don't need anything out of what God has for us. We need God. But here's the fullness of that truth. God knows that we need community around us to help, rev- to help reveal the fullness of who He is to us. Let me say that again. God knows that we need community around us to help reveal the fullness of who He is to us. I remember a few years ago having a conversation with somebody who I knew and this guy told me that he was a, a believer. He told me he was a follower of Jesus And then I asked him, he said, hey, that's great. Which church do you go to? And he said to me, oh, I don't go to church. I'm not part of a Christian community. And he said, I don't think that I need to. And I'm like, okay, what do you mean you don't need to? And he said this. He said, when I go out for a walk, I pray to God then. When I'm out and about, I can talk to God and I know that God is with me. And so he started telling me these reasons of, how he could do his spiritual life, this spiritual journey, all by himself. And as he was talking, I remember kind of inside, I was thinking like, ah, like you're missing out on so much by trying to do this alone because God hasn't designed us to do it alone. He has so much more for us. 
So the Bible starts with community. But not only does the Bible start with community, it also finishes with community as well. In the last chapter of the Bible, in in, in Revelations 22, it says this in verse 12 and 13. This is Jesus talking. He says, Look, I am coming soon. My reward is with me, and I will give each person according to what they have done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. So, Revelation 22, last chapter of the Bible, Jesus starts it by saying, I am coming soon. We go down a few verses to verse 17. This is what is then said. It says, the Spirit, so the Spirit of God, the Spirit and the Bride says, come. Who's the Bride? That's us. This is us as God's people. Jesus is saying He's coming and the Spirit and the Bride, us the church, we say in reply, come Lord Jesus. And again, if we go down just another three uh, verses to verse 20, Jesus says, He who testifies to these things says, Yes, I am coming soon. You know, this is Jesus talking about one day coming back to the earth again to be reunited with his people. What is that about? It's community. So the first chapter of the Bible is community, the last chapter of the Bible is community. And every chapter in between is all about God revealing himself to his people. It's all about God leading his people. It's about God coming to earth to be with his people. And it's all about how God is now calling us into community with him and with each other so that his kingdom can be established. So here's what I'm thinking, church. If the Bible is consumed with community, then there, needs, then, then there needs to be that focus in our lives as well. We need to be embracing this biblical truth that we are called for, for, for community and connection with one another. So in a few moments' time, you're going to be hearing about what community looks like and can look like in our church, Cedar Yorks. But before then, I've got six quick fire truths to encourage you further on why our strength is in community. And we're going to just zoom quickly through these. So that number one is this. Community reveals the full beauty of God's salvation plan. If we go back to Ephesians 3 verse 10, let me read it again. Now his intent is that now through the church, the manifold wisdom of God shall be made known. You know, that term there, the manifold wisdom of God, It's referring to the completed outworking of God's salvation plan. The Bible tells us that that God in His wisdom, He brought both Jew and Gentile together, now as one people under His Lordship. We know that, that when God pulled people together, when God called this community together, there was people of all backgrounds, all nations and all cultures. You see, God's family hasn't been limited to just a certain type of person or a certain people group. The invitation is open to all people. You know, one of the most amazing things about God's church, and there are many amazing things about God's church, but but one of the amazing things about God's church is that His church can be found in various forms and expressions all over the world with people from different backgrounds and different cultures. They're all called together and yet even though they're from different places and have different expressions and different forms, we all have one thing in common and it's this, we have the Lord Jesus as our Lord and Saviour. See, because of Jesus, Galatians 3 verse 28 states this, There is now neither Jew nor Gentile. There is now neither slave nor free. There is now neither male nor female, for you are all one in Christ Jesus. As a community, we are now one in Christ Jesus. And as we saw a few moments ago with that first Bible reading in in Acts chapter 2, we see that community soon becomes 
a significant aspect of the early church as they spent their time together. We're told they spent their time together in the temple. We're told they spent their time together in each other's homes, breaking bread together, having meals together. And this was people from different backgrounds, different walks of life coming and revealing the full beauty of God's salvation plan. In a segregated and broken world, we begin to see a picture of God's kingdom. So community reveals the full beauty of God's salvation plan. Church, when we unite together as community, we are expressing to the world who God is and also expressing to them that there's also a place for them. Number two, community provides an opportunity for generosity. In Acts chapter 4, verses 32 to 35, we're told that again, the believers in the early church, they shared everything that they had. In fact, it tells us in those verses that God's grace was so powerfully at work in this new community that there was now no needy person amongst them. Each of them gave what they had and they, re- they received what they needed. Let me say that again. Each one of them gave what they had and they received what they needed. What a great picture of the power of community as they shared out of God's blessing from their lives. See, community provides the opportunity for generosity. Let me encourage us with this. Let me encourage you with this. God's blessing in your life has been given for a far bigger purpose than just your life alone. God is calling us to something bigger and, and, and stronger than just us and our lives alone. He's calling us into community. Number three is this. Community displays who we are through our love for each other. You know, in John chapter 13, uh, the, the author, John, he, he writes and he tells us about a, a conversation that Jesus is having with his disciples And this conversation, he's talking about community and serving each other. And there's a really powerful moment for Jesus and his disciples because Jesus, in that context, he gets down on his hands and knees and he begins to wash the feet of his disciples. And he says this in in, verses 34 and 35. He says, A new commandment I give to you. Love one another. As I have loved you, so you must love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. You know, there's so much we can say on this today, but we don't have time to go into it fully. but, But let me say this. How does Jesus tell us that we are to show our love for one another? He tells us it's by coming together in community, to serve and support each other. And that leads us on to number four. Number four is this. Community gives us a place to share each other's burdens. There's a great verse in Psalm 55, verse 22. It says this, Cast your cares on the Lord and He will sustain you. He will never let the righteous be shaken. I love that because as part of our discipleship, when, when storms come at us in life, when we go through things, the Bible tells us that we can cast our cares, our worries, our anxiety, we can cast everything on Him. But let me remind you what I said a few minutes ago of Adam and Eve, because Adam had God. He had God dwelling with him. And yet God knew that Adam needed Eve. So therefore, Galatians 6 verse 2 says this, bear one another's burdens. You know, this is the idea of when we go through those times in life, we have community around us who can carry those things with us. We can share our burdens with them and they can help us to carry those things. We can give them to God and we can then share them with those around us. And and church, I'm sure you're the same as me. Over the 25 years that I've been part of the church and been a follower of Jesus, there's been so many times where we've gone through things as as an individual or a family. And 
And we've taken those things to God. We've, we've said, God, we need your help with this. But also we've had a community of people around us where we can say, hey, let's just, can we just share with you what we're going through? And it's amazing to have people, Christ-like people, who help to carry those burdens with us and for us. Sometimes it's in a spiritual way where people say, hey, I'm going to pray for you. And you know that these people really are praying for you. Other times it may have looked a more of a practical outworking where people have done some shopping for us. People have made meals for us. Maybe people have taken the kids out for us for a bit or, or maybe they babysat our children so we can go and, and do something for an evening or, or whatever we need to do. And, and so when it comes to community, how great, how awesome is it that we can have a place to share each other's burdens. Number five is this. Community reveals how the gifts that God has given to you fits into the bigger picture and purpose. In 1 Corinthians chapter 12, the church is described as one body with many parts. And in verse 27 of that chapter, the Apostle Paul is speaking collectively to the church and he says this, you are the body of Christ. So together, collectively, you are the body of Christ. And each one of you is part of it. You see, God has called us into His body, the church. God has given all of us different gifts and abilities. And what are those gifts and talents for? What are those abilities for? Why has God blessed us with these things? Here's why. It's so that we can build up and edify the body of Christ. That is, we can bring our gifts, our talents, our abilities, and we can see the body of Christ, His church, established and built up. Very simply, our gifts find their full potential and power in the context of community. And lastly, number six, community helps us in our discipleship. Proverbs 27 verse 17 says this, As iron sharpens iron, so one person sharpens another. Taking that thought into 1 Corinthians 11 verse 1, Paul encourages the church in Corinth by saying this, Follow me as I follow Christ. Another version says, Imitate me as I imitate Christ. And during this time, the, the church in Corinth there they're struggling with a number of issues, trying to get their heads around a, a number of issues as they continue to embrace this new life that God has given to them. And so to help them to know what to do and what not to do and how to process this new life, how to get the fullness out of this new life, Paul says to that community, follow me, copy me, imitate me as I follow, copy and imitate Christ. You see, church, we need to be in community where we can follow the example of others in order to live out the fullness of who we've been called to become and so that with the help of other people, it can bring direction and guidance for our lives. We need community to help us to become more like Jesus. So our strength is in community. This is what God is saying to us as a church in this season. This is what we want to strengthen in this season. We want every single one of us to realise our strength isn't by ourselves, is not doing life by ourselves, but our strength is in community. And our prayer today is this. Our prayer is that you will be part of the strengthening of this new season with all of us from different walks of life, different backgrounds, different ages, different nationalities. We come together in community as one. Why? Because our strength is in community. Come on, church, let us pray together. Yes, God, we thank you so much for who you are in our lives. Lord God, we thank you that you haven't called us to live this life of faith in isolation by ourselves. Lord God, I thank you that, that you gave your promise that you will be with us in every moment of our lives, that you will strengthen us, that, that you will lead us, that you will be there beside us. 
But Lord God, we thank You for that powerful truth that Adam, he needed you, but he also needed Eve. So Lord God, I pray right now, You help every single one of us to to step into the fullness of this. Help us to, to step into everything that You've called us to become because we're not trying to do it in isolation by ourselves, but help us to realise our strength is in community. That You've called us to be part of this thing called the church, this community called the church. And so Lord God, I pray for every single one of us as we begin and continue to strengthen the stakes for this new season. Lord God, speak to us, help us. Help us to become the community that You've called us to be. In Jesus' Name, Amen.